y'all, this is Donnie. I am back again today to redo a tutorial on the Regency style hat. Accidentally, I erased and deleted the previous tutorial I had done. Let me just say that no matter how long one of your videos shows that it is uploading, even if it does upload and you have lots of sweet comments, if it's still in the lineup for being uploaded, do not cancel the upload. It will delete that video. Hard lesson learned because so many of y'all had made such nice comments, given such wonderful, lovely ideas, and now I can't find it. It's nowhere. And I had already deleted the original off of my phone, my camera. So I'm going to do it again. This is a tutorial for the Regency style hat, but the first thing I want to show you while I have it on my desk is my box of glue sticks. I got this off of Amazon. 25 pounds of glue sticks. Four inch. And I'm trying to show y'all. It's a video. Anyway, I'm going to real quick grab a handful and throw them in my caddy up here. Um, this little project for the hat does take quite a few you know, sticks of glue because I use felt and I have used a piece of cardboard uh, for the original prototype. Let me move my glue box. Tell you what, I'm going to put again the, uh, I have an affiliate with Amazon. I'll put that down below and I'll put the information for this 25 pound box of glue sticks down there so that if you're interested, you too can get them. The investment, excuse me, the investment was almost a hundred dollars. It is free shipping, but 25 pounds of glue sticks so far has lasted me all this year and you saw how much was left so there's going to be two or three years worth of glue easily very easily if I'm not mistaken I can get a package of glue sticks at Walmart for six dollars and that might be a hundred glue sticks this is Look below. I'll put the number that the company says. If I'm not mistaken, it's 2,400 glue sticks. So you do the math and you'll find out that you'll, you're spending an awful lot of money for glue sticks. Anyway, uh, I hope that's right. Look below, please. I'm gonna, I'll write it up down below so that I'll do the math on it and I'll, I'll tell you how much each glue stick is worth from Walmart versus um, this company where I get mine. I use also this cheap Walmart AdTech low temp glue gun. Now I've used this particular one for a couple of years now. Um, that's the one I prefer. I know there's a Michelle Pipling, I'll put her um, um, YouTube channel down below. I want y'all to check out Michelle Pipling's videos. Uh, she has some great ideas, y'all. That's where I learn a whole lot of what I do. But she uses a different glue gun with different glue sticks, and y'all might prefer those. So, uh, anyway, uh, I know a number of y'all have that particular glue gun and I don't know the name of it off the top of my head to tell you but this is the one I use this is the project we're gonna do today and uh, again I'm heartbroken that my video is gone because the comments were so helpful were so sweet thank y'all if you've already seen the video the previous one that I did that got deleted uh, you don't need to watch this it's uh it's just gonna be a repeat okay but anyway, I wanted to share with y'all why I had my big, huge box of glue sticks up there. And uh, I'll give you that information down below. This is the uh, Regency style hat. I'm reaching behind me. Hold on. It's way up high. This is the hat that I made using this tutorial. Uh, there are videos um, 
showing how I made the hat step by step. And uh, this is the inside of it that I'm going to be showing on this video. If you want to see how this hat was made, look and um, down below I'll put the first video link and then you can just go from there. And that's how I made it. Um, I mentioned I had used a cereal box for the inside. Um, I'll show you that part in just a minute as we make this base. This particular hat is not yet finished because I am still waiting for a shipment uh, that I've ordered of a material called Buckram, B-U-C-K-R-A-M. It is a stiffener um, that is not only used for making drapes, like the, the pinched pleats, you know, at the top of a drape that holds that particular um, drapes, you know, stiff so that they stay the same. But they use that particular stabilizer uh, stuff for the inside uh, hat of a hat and have for many, many, many years, evidently. So I'm going to cut a piece of that and put it inside this particular hat and uh, stabilize it better because right now, yeah, it's got a lot of... Uh, give to it and I want it to be firmer uh, somebody in one of my videos asked me to put this on a hat stand so the best I have is this candlestick thing not candlestick y'all know what I mean it was a uh, bobbin a big huge one it's probably not a good size let me try this other one I brought that over thinking it would be the one this one's a little smaller but uh there's, yeah, that's better. This is not a full-size woman's hat unless you're a very petite lady. It's very small. But uh, I wanted it just to play with to see how I might be able to do a, uh, a hat just for fun. Because I would like to play with pretties, of course. Anybody watching any of my videos knows that. But because a hat, I have... Um, I have a little collection of hats and I wanted to add to my collection and not and not just keep buying the old hats that I find like for $50. I can't do that anymore. So I'm going to put a little bit of an investment in some hat making materials and this is this is what I've come up with for this one. Now I want to do a Juliet cap. I want to try one of those. I want to try a like a little sun bonnet back from the prairie days and there's just different ideas I've got that I want to try um, the Juliet cap is going to be next as soon as I get that buckram I'm going to cut it out and, and try it too so we'll try that and see what happens and again there's the inside of it and you can check that out on the videos that I, the way I made that and then those gorgeous feathers so I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to show you actually how the base of this particular hat was made. The whole idea I had started with was to only use glue and felt and obviously a piece of cardboard. The felt was too flimsy for a hat and the more I worked with this particular prototype, this was the first one I made, uh, the more I realized I, a piece of cardboard is just not going to cut it. It's going to have to have something more stable in it, uh, especially if I'm going to want it, you know, to invest the, the money and the time into making something pretty. I wanted it to last for a while. So just making the prototype took me a good long time to come up with the dimensions on it and the way to kind of construct it. So the construction is what I'm going to share with y'all. Feel free to uh, make one yourself. I would love for y'all to try it. Uh, what I did was I doubled everything I made to try to stiffen it enough to make it a good base for decorating and it worked pretty good um, the more stuff I put on it the stiffer it got because I kept adding more glue to it and all but um, let me just show you real quick how I constructed it and I'm not going to be putting another piece of cardboard in this one that I'm going to show you because I'm waiting for that buckram stabilizer stuff to come in and I will be using that instead What I'm doing is cutting two pieces of felt, a round circle, this one is eight inches, 
Um, you can use a plate, you can use anything round. Start in the middle and go out four inches if you want to and just go all the way around. But um, two pieces of felt that are round and then two pieces this shape. I'll show you real quick my little template that I made. I had to tape a couple of pieces of paper together to get it long enough. But when put on a fold, I came up with the shape I wanted first to make the brim of the hat so that when I opened it up and put it with the 8 inch circle which is going to be the cap of the hat I would have a brim that as you saw in my prototype would come up and make a brim shape and to do that let me hold this up a little closer to the camera I cut two of these on a fold. This piece folded measures three inches from here to here and six and a quarter inches from the center of the fold in a small arc shape going up six and a quarter inches to the tip of the, the oval here where I ended it. And then I just did the three inches around here as I cut it and it was really rather simple I eyeballed it and I know you can too it's just a simple arc it looks kinda like a boomerang actually so that's the a smile maybe when it's opened up so cut two of those I'm gonna show you on this one that I've already got cut out what I did to make it look like this. This is the brim. We're going to do a couple of cuts in it and then glue it. And then we're going to do a couple of cuts in this, in the circle, and do it. And then I'll show you how to put them together. I'm going to start with the brim piece. Simply on the bottom edge because I'm going to I'm going to hold it up so that the edge of the brim that's the furthest away from the cap of the hat Huh? Here I'm going to sound like the cat in the hat again. When I attach the brim to the cap, this is going to be the outside edge. Okay? Folded together. Cut two V's. And these are going to be like darts. Just kind of eyeball it. I'm going to cut a V right about here. And only to about that halfway mark right in here about halfway up I only want it to go into about that far and I'm gonna cut a little V there and then I'm gonna cut another little V a little bit further to the edge and not going past that halfway mark again because I don't want that to uh, be too flimsy. I want to keep that that shape right there the way it is. Then when I open it up, we're going to glue it. This is the center. Since it was folded, it's real simple to see. I'm going to mark it real, real quick. And I'm using an ink pen so that you can see it. I'm going to mark that center. And going toward the center, overlap on those V's overlap just slightly just enough so that it actually is overlapped I'm not sure that's even a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to push in the center of that the tip of that V that I cut I'm going to just kind of hold that closed and push it down then I'm going to do the same thing right here on this side. A little bit of glue, fold it over, hold it down, and then push. And that side's done. Now going toward the center on this side, I'm going to go on the left side of the cut. And I'm going to take 
and fold it to the center, overlap it to the center on both of those. And I've done this three or four times now and the more I do it, the simpler it gets. So um, just don't burn yourself on the hot glue. And that's the way I make the brim of my cap. Okay. Now let's look at the cap. The cap piece is an eight inch square felt. All I do here is fold it in half and flick off the dirt. Oh, I don't know where I'm getting all this. I'm going to go ahead and crease it just a little bit just to kind of help it hold it, you know, stay together while I cut it. And just eyeballing it, this is maybe two inches, maybe not even that, inch and a half to two inches. I'm going to snip with my very dull scissors. I'm going to snip that much off. At the top there might be a half an inch so that the whole thing is an inch. And it'll make that. Keep it folded. I flip it over just because to me I'm holding it that way so I'm going to just flip it. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite part of that fold so that now I have opposite V cuts to make darts. Then I'm going to fold it on top of itself. It does not have to be exact. This is the base. It's going to all be covered up. I'm going to do the exact same cut on one only edge here. And this now is the back of the hat, the cap portion. This is the back. Because I have already folded it inwards, I'm going to pretend this is the top now. Now, real, real quick, refold that so that the back, just like you had just cut the back of the hat, and then at the front part, instead of cutting there, make a little mark. This is going to be the front of your hat. Make just a little mark there so that you can tell that that was the center of the front of the cap. Ultimately, we're going to take these two pieces where the back is marked and the front is marked of the cap, and we're going to meet those together. Okay, that's why we're marking those. Now, we're going to do the same idea with the cap piece. This is the front, and so I'm going to run a little bit of glue and do this tuck or fold or whatever we're calling this to the front of the hat. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing and fold this piece over to the front of the hat. And the gargling you hear in the background is my washing machine. So I kind of have to do all this stuff while I'm down here. Okay, push those little things down. Now we've made the inside of the cap. On the back of the cap, which is the single one opposite the mark we've made, just do one of either one way or the other, and it's not going to matter. Again, this part is not going to show at all. It's going to be covered up when you decorate your, your hat. But we are trying to get the shape of the, the cap. You might have to make it do it for you. Then I'm going to pop that so that all three of those are going the same direction. And now we have the shape of the hat. The cap. Okay, that's going to be on the crown of the head. Then we're going to attach. After you get the two of these done, you're going to have two caps. I'm going to flip it this way because I've marked the top on this one. 
and two brims. Line them up together, and this is where the lots of glue comes into play. I'm going to push each of those little points up into its, the, its friend above it and line them up so that they're even. And I'm going to start along the inside center here and glue these pieces together. And my whole idea was to make it with glue and felt. And unfortunately, I've run into the issue, like I said, of it not being stable enough really to decorate. And so that's why I have purchased some buckram. Feel free to do what I've done in the past using a cereal box. It's doable that way. It's, I just don't know how long that's going to last that way. And like I said, I want to, I want it to last a good long time. So I'm going to go ahead and invest in a little bit of that buckram and work with it for a little while and see what I can do with it. Never worked with that before. Now that I've got the whole inside edge glued together, I'm going to do around the edge here. And then I'm going to start adding some glue to the inside so that these pieces are going to hold together. And then I'm going to keep reshaping it so that it will stay the shape I want it to be. So, yeah, we'll be in a second. And it's just a matter of lining up the edges and getting the glue in there. I was hoping it was going to, with the glue in there, to make it stable enough to work with. And it does. It's just not stable enough to last a long, long time, I don't think. Um, I've made so much, so many items now with glue that it's my go-to thing now. And uh, I'm really loving working with it because I'm not afraid of my glue gun anymore. It has taken me a long time to become friends with my glue gun. I used to not use hot glue hardly ever. And um, I'm so thankful to Michelle for doing her Just Add Glue episodes because it made me get out my glue gun and learn to use it and to be precise with it. It took practice. I'm not going to tell you that I picked up a glue gun and was able to do things with it quickly because I burned myself. Um, the silicon mat that you see here, um, it comes with a, a number of tools. You can find it on Etsy if you look up silicon glue mat, I believe. This is one of my favorite little tools that it came with. It's a little spatula. I use it a lot and it does help keep from getting burned. But I've found that if I do get glue on me, I quickly put my finger down on the silicone mat, which, by the way, I have tacked with tacks, flat-headed tacks, to my, um, my table, which is just a hollow core door. And it holds it very steady. It has not come off since I did this, and not once has it come off. So uh, there's a, an idea for you if you are able to tack into a tabletop. So there's the brim. We're going to do the same thing and just put the two pieces of the cap together and glue them together. And I'm going to find my center here and make sure that the points all match up that we made at the top of the cap. I'm going to hold this open a little bit and start on the top of the cap. I'm going to just kind of make a little circle up here of glue, maybe a little bit even in the center. And I'll have a second or two to work with this while it's warm and double check that I'm lined up as I push that from the bottom and the top and get these together. 
and that is really the hardest part of the whole thing is just make sure it's lined up and then we're just going to glue it all together Now, I don't know what my original video had on it that I'm not sharing with you now. If I've missed anything important and y'all are actually watching this video, would you let me know? Because I can't recall. My memory is nothing like it used to be. And I don't, I don't have a clue if I'm missing something. So, after I get this all glued together it will be ready to attach the brim to it. And y'all can just see that I am putting glue just to every little bit here. Maybe not neat and tidy, but it's getting there. Going to line it up. Move the glue strings. My room is very cold. It's a basement. Uh, it's cold down here, even in the summertime. I'll, wait, not cold. It's cool. Uh, the air conditioner has been on up in the main part of the house, and so uh, coming down here today, it is pretty chilly down here. Heat rises, and so I get the cool room in the summertime, but I get the freezing cold room in the wintertime. But just this last week, we got our fireplace chimney redone. The owners of the house that built it did not use a fire retardant, what is it, safe, let's just call it, it was not safe. Uh, the stack on the inside of the fireplace, we found out when we had it cleaned last year, it was made of aluminum that was intended for a gas vent gas fireplace. That was all that it was scheduled for and it was open at the top there was a place where sparks could actually fall at the top of it in a three inch spot and could have burnt the house down so we just spent a lot of pretty pennies having that all redone so that we can actually burn a fire in this fireplace and keep the house warm with it instead of gas and electric so Don't ask me why I got onto that. I'm making a hat. My brain, like I said, is just not working. I do remember on my original tutorial, I messed this part up. So let's do this the right way this time. I'm going to match up these two pieces. I'm putting the brim, which is the curved piece, on top of the cap piece. Matching it up at the center of both pieces. And I'm only going to overlap at this point about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to do about a two or three inches here of overlap where it's a quarter of an inch overlap. And I'm going to let that set because I'm going to be doing more when we get to going up here. And I don't want that to slide off while it's still warm. Okay, that's good. This next part, now this is important because this is where I want the hat to actually hold together and make the brim come up a little bit. So if I do it like just flat the way it's wanting to do naturally, I don't think I like the shape of it going straight across. I wanted it to come up some. So I'm going to push these little ears, the edges here down just a little bit until that shape appears where the brim of the hat actually kind of comes up. My idea is that the girls wearing a cap like this would have ruffled hair, curled up hair in here that needed to show beautifully around their face. So with that in mind, I'm only going to be overlapping this next part a half to one inch. You can determine on your own base where you want that to be. If you want it flatter, a flatter brim like that, then let the natural curve tell you where to put it. I'm going to push this little 
curve down and make it lay more like that so that my rim will pop up just a little bit. I don't want to do it too far down, which is kind of what I did the first time I tried this, because it rumples the brim. The brim now has ridges in it, and I do not want that. So I find that right there to be the look I'm, I'm trying to get. So that's where I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to hold it, put a little glue there so it'll hold. And then I'm going to come on the other side and match the same thing over here. I'm still holding this so that it's not going to slide around while it's cooling down. Another glue stick. So we're using a bunch now. And as I decorated the hat, I noticed I used a lot too. Every time I make a book, I use a lot of glue. I know my husband, he's he's marvelous because he lets me buy anything I need or want for that matter. But when I said I need to buy a hundred dollars worth of glue, he was like, huh? <laughs> and I said, Well, I've done the math. Let me show you the math. Okay, we'll pull that. Now I've got the look I want. The brim is doing what I'd like it to do. And so now I'm going to come on the inside of the hat and I'm going to finish the, the edges here and get them glued down and firmed up. The previous video, this was where I added that piece of cardboard to the inside. I'll show that to you again, just in case you want to do it this way. I curved, I cut out a piece of cardboard just to fit the inside of the cap on this one end where the brim is. This piece I folded like this and kind of tried to crunch the cardboard so that it would maintain that shape. And then I just glued it right in. Okay. This one, I'm going to wait until the buckram comes. And I'm going to use that stabilizer and I'm going to make a piece for it. As I get it, which is not scheduled to get here till like next Saturday, uh, I ordered it a week ago. When I checked the shipment, it looks like it might be here on Tuesday. So if it comes, I'm going to immediately.